The 2014 West Africa Ebola outbreak was the worst Ebola outbreak in history. Tens of thousands of cases were concentrated in West Africa. The World Health Organization was responsible for organizing an international response to the crisis. My name is Conrad. I was part of that response and am here to let you know how the developed world can do better responding to an outbreak, particularly the timely evacuation and care for responders. We needed a helicopter capable of transporting symptomatic Ebola patients, essentially a helicopter with a bubble. Thousands of humanitarians deployed to West Africa to respond to the crisis. However, they were requesting assurance that the WHO would take care of them if they were exposed to Ebola. Humanitarian responders were asking for a guarantee for their medical evacuation to Europe or their home country. The United States Department of State was coordinating medical evacuations for Americans exposed to Ebola. I was part of the team at Department of State coordinating transcontinental evacuations for patients with Ebola. Because of my experience coordinating these unique evacuations, my boss assigned me to assist WHO in developing their internal procedures and guidelines for evacuation from Sierra Leone, Liberia, and Guinea. So, there I was working for WHO to help them develop a timely medical evacuation plan for humanitarians responding to the Ebola crisis. I traveled to Freetown, Sierra Leone to serve as WHO's Ebola medical evacuation coordinator. One of my assignments was to help put a system in place for WHO's country office in Sierra Leone. I was known as the guy with the Ebola plane and, and the humanitarian representatives wanted to make sure their volunteers were eligible for medical evacuation if needed. The Cary Town Ebola Treatment Center was designated as the treatment center for humanitarian responders exposed to Ebola in Sierra Leone. It served as a temporary holding facility for Ebola patients waiting for medical evacuation from West Africa to Europe. However, traveling to the Ebola treatment center, to the air, from, from the treatment center to the airport was very difficult. It was about a two hour drive from Carytown Treatment Center to Lungi Airport on a poorly maintained and congested single lane road. The airport is outside of Freetown, across the Tagrin Bay in a village called Lungi. There are three basic methods to travel from Freetown to the Lungi Airport. A 20 minute water taxi across the bay, an hour trip on a ferry, or a three hour drive around the bay to the airport. I asked the United Nations country representative for a boat, but they did not have one to give me. What I really needed was a helicopter. But we did not have the technology to transport a patient under biological containment conditions in a helicopter. Therefore, driving was the only option for a symptomatic patient. Transporting the patient to the airport quickly and safely for their medical evacuation flight was a real concern. A two to three hour ride in the back of a hot ambulance wearing a plastic Tyvek biological suit is difficult for anyone, particularly someone who is dehydrated, nauseous, and ill with other uncomfortable symptoms. Sierra Leone police were operating at bullet checkpoints every few miles or so, stopping the traffic, having passengers get out, checking them for fevers. I needed a faster way. I needed a helicopter capable of transporting symptomatic patients exposed to Ebola, not only from the treatment center to the airport, but also from the field to the treatment center. In Liberia, the Monrovia Medical Unit was the hospital responsible for providing care to humanitarians responding to the crisis and were exposed to Ebola. Although the hospital was close to the airport, there were concerns evacuating exposed responders quickly from the field to the medical unit. Many of the villagers where the cases were coming from were in the bush, out in the jungle, and it was difficult to reach by vehicle. Responders often arrived to these remote locations by helicopter, and if they became ill, they had to walk out of the bush. Symptomatic Ebola patients made the long journey wearing a plastic Tyvek biological suit, mask, gloves, goggles, walk by foot from their village across rough jungle terrain to the nearest road, once they reached a road, they traveled by vehicle for several kilometers on an unimproved road to the nearest Ebola treatment unit. The trip took hours. 
and was definitely unfavorable for the patient's medical con condition. The villages where most of these patients come from have soccer fields, which can be considered for helicopter landing sites. Unfortunately, the developed world does not have a biocontainment system or the procedures for evacuating a patient using a helicopter. This technology would have been instrumental in reducing the evacuation time and the risk to the patient's health. We need to innovate before the storm. We need things like a helicopter with a bubble to transport symptomatic patients. I challenge innovators to solve this patient transport problem before the next outbreak. Thank you.